In this video, I will show you how to use a virtual machine to run software that is not compatible with your current Windows system. Some old software may have been created for Windows XP or Vista, but may have stopped getting support, or your software is only supported on 32-bit machines. These are cases when virtual machines can be useful. In this video, I will focus on the use of VMware Player. This is a substitute for XP mode on Windows 7 devices that are not professional and above. I am currently running on Windows 7 Home Premium. VMware Player is a free download from the VMware website found at vmware.com. The links to the download files I am using can be found in the description box below this video. Once you install VMware Player, you need to set up your player to run. You will need an installer disk or an ISO file with the system you plan to install, most likely a version of Windows XP or Windows Vista. You can use VMware's vCenter conversion to convert an old computer you own, possibly running an XP or Vista, to a virtual machine. For students, your university probably has a distributable copy of Windows operating systems, both 32 and 64-bit versions. To be safe, pick a Windows XP Vista or 7 32-bit because most software works on 32-bit but not 64-bit. To check what you are currently using, go to the Start menu and search for System Information. If you see an x86, this means you are running a 32-bit machine. This means you shouldn't have many problems or the need to watch this in the first place, but if you do, you should probably download XP during this process. Here it says I am using a 64-bit machine, designated by x64. If you have a 64-bit machine, try downloading the same version of your operating system, except 32-bit. This will most likely solve your problem. Once you have the installer disk, or the ISO image, also known as a disk image, with your operating system, you are ready to create your virtual machine. Open VMware Player and click Create a Virtual Machine. Choose the version of installation you are choosing to use. If you have a disk, put it in now. If not, choose the ISO option and choose the file you are using. Once you get past this stage, everything should be quite self-explanatory. If you have no idea what you're doing, just go with whatever is already inputted in the fields. You should, however, make sure you're giving your virtual machine at least the following. 10 gigabytes of hard disk and 1 gigabyte of memory. The rest of the settings can be left as default. For more details on the process, click on the link in the description. Thanks for watching.